This is a video demonstration of the Kolmogorov Smirnov test, which thankfully everyone refers to as a KS test. Um, it follows exactly the example in the um, chapter notes where we're comparing the answers to a question about confidence in purchasing from a catalog to confidence in purchasing from a retail store. And we might want to ask the question, are these numbers statistically significantly different so that we can draw a conclusion that in fact our target population prefers one of these to the other. Uh, if we eyeball these numbers, it appears to be pretty clear that people are more confident in retail purchases, question 5a, than they are in catalog purchases, which is question 4a. But we do want to perform the statistical test to make sure that we can, in fact, draw that conclusion. So we're going to start by finding the proportions of each of these things. In other words, this proportion is 20 out of 124. So we need to take all of these numbers and divide by 124 to find their proportions. That is the number that's here, divided by 124. And we can drag that down. So those are the proportions. 16% said they're not at all confident, et cetera, et cetera. 33% said they're very confident, and so on. We'll do the same thing over here. Um, these, uh, this is 4 out of 124. And then we can drag this formula down uh, to find those proportions as well. The next step is to find the cumulative proportions. You can think of cumulative proportion as a running total. So in the first or lowest category here, uh, the running total is just the first value because there's nothing to add up yet. But from that point on to calculate a cumulative, you're going to take your previous running total and add in your new figure. So now if we were to add up these two numbers, we would get 0 0.40. Uh, and we continue on in that manner. I'll just do one more before I start dragging formulas. We take the previous running total and add in the new value. Now adds up to 0.5. And then we can just drag that down. You know you've done it correctly if the cumulative proportion is 1, because that means all the data has been included. Over here we do the same thing. Cumulative property starts with the uh, proportion, excuse me, starts with the first proportion. And then we take our running total and add in the new value. And we can drag that formula down as well. And we've included everything because it totals 1. Next step is to calculate the differences between the cumulative proportions in the different questions. So we will subtract one from the other. And since we're just subtracting one row from the other, we can drag this formula down as well. And we found all of those differences. We then need to find the maximum difference, which is here. 0.153 is the largest number on this list. And we're going to refer to that value as D. Next step is to find the critical value of D, which is going to be our benchmark for drawing a conclusion about our data. Uh, the formula for critical value of D is 1.36 divided by the square root of our sample size, which in this case is 124. Um, a couple things. Just to be clear, 1.36 is a part of the formula. It's the number you will always use. It's not something you need to figure out or that's specific to this problem. It's just always 1.36 in a KS test. Uh, and also notice that the equation for square root in Excel is SQRT. So that's going to give us a value here, 0.122. So we need to compare our D to the critical D. If our D is greater than the critical D, it means that we can conclude that these frequencies are distributed differently. Uh, that is the case uh, going on here, 0.15, our D is greater than the critical D, 0.12. What, means, what that means in this case is we can say statistically that the target population does prefer or has more confidence in a retail store purchase 
than a catalog purchase for this particular good. If our D were less than the critical D, it means we do not have enough evidence to conclude that there's a difference between the two distributions.